Paquito, ¿tú conoces mi historia? No. <risa> Venga. Venga pues. A ver si nos alcanza el tiempo. Sí, My, en español o en inglés. Como tú prefieras, Una mezclita. Ya, yeah, okay. está en inglés. Yeah, yeah, do that, do that. Ok. We love that. No, I'm, I'm English coming. Yeah, yeah, I might yeah. just go in English. Yeah. Ok, no, I'm going to go with English. Mi vocabulario es mejor en, en inglés. Hay veces que me, me faltan las palabras. Ok, Juanito, so, the story of my life is the story of migration. Yeah. Mine too. I came to the US in 1988, and I was um, running away from violence in Colombia. Um, it was violence at home, and violence, just generalized violence. It was the time of um, the, uh, um, the war on drugs here in the U.S. and the big cartels in Colombia mm -hmm. and they were um, creating chaos in Colombia uh, trying to repress any sort of pushback from the population or politicians so they were you know, bombing places and killing people and I just wanted a way out. I was, I was a very young 21 year old woman and uh, um, I, I lived next to a woman that I loved because my mom, you know, we haven't had a good relationship. She was violent. She was a violent mom. So this woman, my neighbor, um, had a son in the U.S. that was studying here and, it, and I had never met him before. And he came for summer vacation. And um, I thought we'd fallen in love. Um, we went out for a month. <laughs> And then he came back to the U.S. And this was a time where there was no email or, uh, you know, I iPhones. And so we plotted our, you know, marriage um, by letters. We, um, and we decided that he was going to come back in December and we were going to get married and, and I was going to leave. And my mom said, over my dead body. <laughs> So I don't know, I don't want to, I don't think I need to get into a lot of detail, but um, I, I, I look back and, you know, as, as a grown-up woman and who's, you know, been through quite a bit, I look back and I don't know how I did that at 21 years old, going against the one person who had terrified me all my life. And, but I think that I did that from my gut and, and out of a desire to survive. And, if you know, I, it, was, it was two of us, my sister and me, and she didn't survive. She killed herself. And um, so anyway, it's, um, yeah, it was uh, sort of a quest for survival, I think. And um, I'm still making sense of it, right? But, um, but I landed in upstate New York. Uh, out of the tropics, you know, with a man that I didn't know. I remember flying over New York City. I'd never been away from Colombia. I'd never been away from my house for more than a week um, or so. And I um, remember flying over New York when we were landing and looking at this guy who was sleeping next to me and thinking, <laughs> who the hell is this guy? And I didn't know him. I had seen him for a month and, uh, during the summer vacation. And then he came back in December. And it was a mad dash and a, and a fight with my, my mom and my family because nobody wanted me married because they knew it was crazy. I didn't know him, I didn't know English, I never been, you know. They thought, what are you doing? You know, and I was studying in Colombia um, and I don't know why I, I, why I persisted, but I did. And he, he was studying in Rensselaer, um, upstate New York, and he was probably the harshest of environment for me to land, uh, you know, in that sort of circumstance. And it's surprising that we lasted for four and a half years. He was a, a really wonderful human being. Uh, um, you know, we were very young and it didn't work out, but he was driven and very studious and I just followed his lead. He was studying and I was studying behind him. And he went for a PhD at Virginia Tech and I, that, you know, I landed there, that's where it ended. But I was already on my way, you know, to getting a master's and so... Were you in love? No, no, I was never in love. 
I don't think so. I love them, and I, I love the idea. Is he in love with you? I don't know, but I left, and he, it was hard for him. Um, yeah, he was probably that idea. Um, but anyway, um, it, it ended in, in at Virginia Tech, and, and that's where my life as a sort of an independent self started, where I was finally able to kind of find my way in the world without um, any dependency on anybody or anything. And, uh, you know, my family was expecting when I said it's over, you know, I called and said, okay, when are you coming? I said, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I'm staying. What? How are you going to take care of yourself? I, I, was, um, I was going to the food pantry and um, working, uh, flipping burgers <laughs> later. Uh, but I was determined. I wasn't going back to see my family. One of the things they said when... You know, when I was getting married, and you're coming back, and you're gonna come back devastated, and we're gonna have to pick up the pieces. And so that was in the back of my head. I'm like, I'm not going back, I'm not going back in pieces, I'm not gonna pick up anything. And, um, and I don't know, <laughs> I think I've always operated from my gut, because I don't know. Yeah, it was this brain over here that has driven me. Well, intuition. Intuition. Intuition, yeah. yeah. Intuition. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I have a relationship with my mom now, and, and we talk about it with my, my brothers. And, and I speak about my sister and how I, you know, um, I had my first episode of depression here in, uh, in, at, the, at Virginia Tech where there was a system that supported me and picked me up and showed me that there was a way out of the darkness. And I think my sister didn't have that in Colombia. And, um, and we talk about that and we have sort of made sense of this and we've all made sense of it. And, and, uh, Back then, you know, it was very painful for everybody, and uh, today I think about it as a And you know, where I ended up with this wonderful little girl that, you know, in many ways who she is because of who I am and what I've been through. So anyway, that's, you know, a little bit of my story and my vision. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> so I'm just gonna start and then just go. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, when you, when you said my story's been um, the story of migration, um, you know, I, I can absolutely relate. And, uh, and interestingly enough, I mean, when I think back before I was even born, my story was of migration. So my father came to my, my father's father came to Utah. He was one of the Mormon settlers in Utah. And uh, no, my father's grandfather. And um, they wanted. They ended up moving to Mexico and started what's now known as the Mormon colonies. So my father, who's his last name is Taylor. He was actually born in Mexico, uh, in, in the Mormon colonies. And so you, that great grandfather was not Mexican. No, no, he's American Mormon. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so, um, and then my mother was born uh, in Chihuahua, Mexico. Mm -hmm. So anyway, there was already a lot of migration happening. Like I, like you know, my ancestors were. were Mm -hmm. uh, and um, interesting enough, going from the U.S. to Mexico, because we often think of it the other way around. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, so anyway, I was born. Uh, my my mother uh, studied at Brigham Young University, BYU. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, so actually so had my father, but uh, they met in Mexico. And so, go fast forward about six years. I was born in the state of Morelos in Mexico, mm -hmm. in a little town in Puebla. And 
In where? In Guelta. Mm. And um, my, my parents were divorced when I was six years old. Mm. And I have, I have um, two older sisters and an older brother from my mom's first marriage. And then my younger sister and I from my mom's second marriage. Mm. Uh, but my mom always kept the kids. So when my, when my mom was at her second divorce with my father, uh, she saw the opportunity or took it as an opportunity to come to the United States because uh, she always wanted us to have like a, a, an international experience to you know to learn a different language, a different culture. Um, uh, my father stayed in Mexico, and I ended up spending most of my summers. So I, we came to Utah. Mm -hmm. um, and I, was, I was raised Mormon, which I'm not Mormon any longer, nor is my mother, but some of my family still is very Mormon, and some are not Mormon at all. Yeah. And um, so I would spend my summers with my father uh, and my, my older brother and my younger sister. Um, when we, when I was 12, my mother said, I'm getting concerned that you're going to lose your culture and you forget about your roots. Um, so we're going to move back to Mexico. Mm. Um, which I was just starting to feel like I kind of belong somewhere, you know, <laughs> because I've been uprooted. Yeah. Uh, so for so many times I was just trying to kind of feel like I belong. Well, so we moved. Um, and, which I resented for maybe for about a week. And then, I, and then we, we moved to Guadalajara, uh, Jalisco. <laughs> and I immediately fell in love with this wonderful city. Mm. Um, and it was quite a shock going from probably Utah to Guadalajara, Mexico. Wow. Um, and um, I had a wonderful time being there. I was in, you know, I was between the ages of 12 and 16, so I was getting in a lot of trouble, having a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, I was in, I was, uh, my brother and I were in, were in rock bands, so we were like, you know, performing and make, you know, making music and living in that kind of like a garage band rock and roll life. And, uh, uh, but you know, it was, it, I fell back in love with, with, my, with my country, with yeah. Mexico. Well, um, this whole part about getting in trouble a lot and you know, partying and all of that made my mom very nervous. And so she said, we're going back to Utah. <laughs> and I'm like, no. After, <laughs> after how many years? After four years. Wow. So, I, again, I was finally feeling like I belonged somewhere. Yeah. So here we go again. Um, and uh, so I finished high school down in Provo, Utah, at a high school called Tempe High School. And then the, the quickest way for me to get out of that little town was to go to the University of Utah, which is in you know, Salt Lake City. Hmm. Uh, which was a much of a, uh, you know, a, a leap to go from Provo to Salt Lake. But for me, it was like going into a, a bigger city. You know? <laughs> yeah. And I was going to be in yeah. Um, so it was a big thing for me. Um, when I was, I went to study at the University of Utah, um, studied art. And when I was 21, I, uh, my mother had, um, after all our, the kids graduated from high school, my mother sold everything she had and she went and lived in the mountains in, in, in Chihuahua with the Tarahumara Indians. And, um, By herself? Uh, yes, and she actually uh, was uh, raising money and supplies to build uh, medical clinics for, for the Tarawana Indians, like dental clinics and health clinics. And she was doing it single handedly. She never done anything like that, she just started doing it. Uh, wow. And, uh, wow. And, you know, she instilled in us this idea of, like, you know, for those of us that have been so fortunate and privileged to have. Homes and you know education and you know good health and uh, you know, opportunities to travel the world. Uh, that, you know we have a responsibility to give back. Yeah. And so once she, kids got out of the house, she said it's my time to do that. You know? So she sold everything. She sold her home. She sold her Mercedes Benz. She sold everything she had and wow. just moved down there. And then she started. Uh, Right. And then she, she uh, started the first Habitat for Humanity in Mexico. Mm -hmm. So she helped communities build their own homes. With the Taramaras or somewhere else? Um, in, no, this was, this was uh, in, a, in a little town called Anahuac in, in Chihuahua. So, but the, some of them were Taramaras, some of them were not. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so I, I was volunteering there and teaching there and um, helping, helping my mom with the, with the 
more for you, children and uh, You were already you, done with you your know? art? I was, uh, I was done with my art. With art? With your um, studies? Or oh, no, 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 in fact, I was just getting started. Oh. Yeah, but I wasn't, I wasn't uh, loving the art program mm. here at the University of Utah. It didn't, it didn't feel like what my idea in my mind was art school should be. Mm. I had a very kind of romantic, bohemian idea of what <laughs> art school should be. And I wasn't getting it in the kind of like sterile environment of mm. the university here. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so after being there for a year, uh, my, my mom and I decided to take a little vacation, and so we took a road trip oh and down into Mexico, and we went to uh, we went to Guanajuato, and we went to the state of Guanajuato, Guanajuato City, and there was a, a Cervantino festival, you know, Cervantes, right, uh -huh. the author of Don Quixote, uh, or the Spanish Shakespeare, <laughs> uh, and we... It's this beautiful colonial architecture, cobblestone streets, very narrow streets, very romantic, very beautiful. I was just, I, I, I was involved. I mean, and it was also, it was during this festival, so there was just music in the streets and performers and clowns and people from all over the world. And it just felt so international. Um, and um, so I, I was just in heaven and I was like, oh my God, I, you know, I'm back in my land, I'm back in my country, I felt at home. And then we went to this little town called San Miguel de Allende. Oh. And I ended up walking into this little school, it's an you know, ex convent, and it's called uh, El Negro Marte, which is like, it's, uh, it's basically like a Bay of Santos. So I, uh, I walked through this place and I, was, and I thought to myself, this is where I have to be. This wow. is, this is, I, um, this is this is my home. This is wow. you know this is where I have to be. And so um, yeah. I I ended up going back with my mom back to Chihuahua. I drove back with her, and then I got on a bus and came back. And I <laughs> spent the next five years going to art school. In oh my gosh! Wow. And, and, uh, hmm. Anyway, that's about half of my chapter. Yeah. <laughs> of my life, half of my life. I ended up going to uh, to New York City. Um, the From city. there to New York City? Yeah. Um, I was in New York for four years. Uh, I always wanted to, uh, I had friends that had gone to Alaska to be commercial fishermen. Yeah. And I, I was always kind of like jealous of them. I wanted to have this adventure, and so I finally had the courage enough and I ended up going to Alaska. Wow. Um, and uh, huh. started out working in canneries, you know, like cleaning fish, so like, you know, 18 hours a day just cleaning fish. And I would see the fishermen come in with their, and they load their fish, you know, and I was like, I can't do this anymore, I gotta go fishing. So, um, so I finally just had the courage enough to go. I had never fished, I had hardly ever even been on boats. And I just started walking the docks and asking people if I could fish on their boats. And finally, somebody said, yeah, yeah, I'll take you fishing. You know, so, um, uh, so I was fishing for salmon. Anyway, it became like an annual thing for me, so I'd, I'd, go, I'd go back to New York, I'd have some money saved in my pocket, and, uh, you know, I was still waiting tables and doing whatever I had to do to pay the rent, because, you know, New York City is super expensive. Oh my gosh, yeah. Uh, and to, you know, to, to be able to have a studio so I could make art. Uh, anyway, every summer I would go back to Alaska and fish uh, for like three months and save money and go back to New York. Uh, Fourth year I was there, I decided I really I wanted to go to Africa. Africa. Yeah, I've been, I've been, uh, been I love uh, West African uh, drumming. I, I play djembe, um, uh -huh. uh, so I've studied West African drumming and I've, I've drummed for a West African dance class. So I just I fell in love with the rhythms, I fell in love with the art, I fell in love with the music. Um, and, so I decided that I was ready to leave New York and I was going to go do one more season in Alaska. Uh, save every money, everything I could. I, I got rid of everything that I had except for what was in my backpack. Yeah. Went to Alaska and that year, that summer, the fishermen went on strike. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm homeless and uh, just what I have in my backpack and I can't save any money because there's no fishing, right? So, anyway, I ended up going to Seattle because that's, mm. that's what I could afford. I did, yeah. I did have a little bit of money and I ended up traveling through Mexico. I went back to Oaxaca and to Chiapas until I ran out of money and then I just went to Seattle because it was sort of like the closest thing and I, 
I didn't have it in my heart to go back to New York, which I had already left there. Anyway, such as, as life is, with all of its twists and turns, that's where uh, I ended up meeting, who is now my ex-wife, and I ended up meeting Jenna, uh, with, you know, the woman I fell in love with and ended up marrying and having two kids with. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you look back on it, but kind of, in retrospect, it kind of made sense uh, at the mm-hmm. time. Huh. Anyway, um, I ended up coming back to Utah, Jenna ended up coming here, and then we went back to New York, uh, spent seven years in New York together, uh, had our first child six years ago, his name is Felix. In New uh, York? No. Uh, in New York. He was yeah. born in, yeah, he was mm-hmm. born in New York. He was, he was like two weeks old when we moved back to Utah. Mm. Um, so, in my life has always been around art and education and working in community. Um, and so, um, all of that to basically, all of these choices and decisions and travels and everything, the need to survive and the need to, uh, and the love for travel and the love for cultures and the love for art, the love for education. Uh, has led me to where I am now, which is working in a museum as a, you know, in art education. Hmm. So it's interesting all the twists and turns and the back and forth. Um, I'm still a Mexican citizen. I'm an American resident. Um, I, I, I always, I, I'm the only one in my family that has not gotten their American citizenship. Uh, obviously, could have gotten my American citizenship very easily by now because of. First of all, I've lived here for so long, and I've been, yeah. around, I've been a legal resident here for so long. I also married an American. Yeah. Um, and I never wanted to. Yeah. I always wanted to. But now, uh, hmm. I feel the need to. But for two, I mean, for, for three main reasons. One, um, because it makes, it makes traveling easier and for my kids. Yeah. Um, um, the other one is so I can vote. Uh, because I can't vote as an American resident, I have to be a citizen, yeah. as you know. Yeah, I do. And, uh, uh, and what's the third reason? There's a third reason. Uh, oh, because of the current uh, um, situation with, you know, Donald Trump's ideas of, of you know, border immigration and border control and building a wall and everything it's really like I've already like started to feel and and see what that the effects of that even as an American resident if I leave the country whenever I return to the country I get pulled aside take me into a room they question me pretty much for the last three times that I've traveled they do that and and I asked them I said look how you know what can I do so that this doesn't happen because this happens every time, and you know, like I, I miss, I miss my connection flights. If I, you know, like luckily when I travel with want? my kids, <laughs> they just want to go through and they look at everything. They come out record. They look at everything, and they get in each other. You know, they have you. They yeah. have you. Um, and uh, so anyway, they said the only way that you, you that this will change is if you become an American citizen. Yeah. So yeah. that's another really good reason to become an American citizen. Uh, yeah. Plus, I mean, I, I, now I can have dual citizenship. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I didn't want to lose my Mexican citizenship because I'm very proud to be Mexican and of my mm-hmm. heritage. Yeah. But yeah. Um, but yeah. So yeah, that's a snapshot. <laughs> My That's great. Yeah, I like to doodle, so uh-huh. I just, it was interesting how, you know, you talk about, well, you said a phrase about your mom that she, she got rid of everything she had several times, right? And then took to the road. Yeah. And you said the same thing about you, right? Yeah. You got rid of everything you had in New York City and just... Went to Alaska. That's true. But you know that that's story true. of going back and going back, this, this cycle, you know? You've always done it too. I mean, she always did it over here, and then you did it, you know, from here to here and there to there and back and here. And yeah. Yeah. I love that you, I love how you've drawn it in a diagram and you kind of mapped it out, <laughs> the cycles. 
yeah. and the routes, you know, like the, the, the routes, because you know, it's such a, when you think about migration through history, it's there's these routes, right? These, yeah. these, these passages. Yeah. Uh, passages of time and passages of you know, cultures, you know, accidents, and all kinds of different things. But people uh, return. But sometimes we're, yeah. we're kind of unaware of our cycles. Uh huh. Yeah. Like, you know, like my, remember I was saying how, yeah, people return. Yeah. yeah, you return and you leave and you return, right? You return yeah. to the familiar. Do you ever feel like returning? To Colombia? Yeah. Maybe when I retire. Yeah. We'll see. Um, do you miss I it? Do I miss it? You go back though, right? I, I, go, yeah. I do go you back. You go back and visit. Yeah. Just yeah. Not, you haven't got where to live there yeah. since you moved here. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, with this crazy Trump year, you know, uh, and this country sort of, you know, becoming dangerous. I do consider moving and, and living there, yeah. yeah. 